And so if there were no gas at all, and you're looking at it, that would mean that it's a hole. But if there is gas there, that means it's, it's actually, there's actually a cloud there. That's a great question. And here's the answer. We can see um, emission from these clouds in two ways. We can look at the molecules that are part of the gas cloud, or we can look at the very cold dust. Now, dust is very cold. It emits not in an infrared wavelengths, but in millimeter wavelengths, so in the radio. It's, it shines mostly in the radio if it's, if it's 10 degrees or so. And so one of the first things we did was to make a, a survey of all these black spots on the sky at millimeter wavelengths, looking for cold dust. So this is the tracer of cold dust. This is black body emission from cold dust. This is colder and darker than the it is, it's the same material, but it's colder. And it's, there's, there's a bigger collection of it. So the, the idea is that most of the dust in the Milky Way is heated up by stars, and it glows in the infrared. But if you have a really cold patch in front of it, that will be, that will block the light coming from the Okay. Now, isn't that like uh, in the colder regions like that, where it starts to get a little more dense, the, um, I think I remember reading or hearing something where the, a lot of the um, dust particles actually Start to stick together. They do. And they become very efficient at blocking Absolutely. from yes. infrared to, uh, to ultraviolet. That's correct. Um, the dust properties change when the material becomes very cold. It does get very sticky. And in fact, the molecules actually begin to freeze out and they stick to the dust grain. So the, the, the molecules actually go away in the very coldest, densest regions. So when we, when we made this. Um, the survey at, at millimeter wavelengths, looking at the very cold dust, what we found to our delight was these things. These are very dense concentrations within the dark cloud. Here's the dark cloud, right? This is a, the, the color here is the infrared image with the, the black parts that are opaque. And then the cold dust shows a lot of structure. And in particular, we see these very compact objects. And we can estimate their masses from how bright they are. And we find there are a few hundred solar masses, these little cores, yeah. So that's your data? That's my data, oh, yeah. And the previous one was my data. Lines. Yeah, this is all my data. Um, so what we found was very interesting. We found a bunch of cores. And these cores are way too small to be big, massive clouds like the clouds are typically found. In fact, this is what you start to expect. These are going to form a few stars. Now, not all the mass of one of these cores turns into a star. Some small fraction of it does. Maybe a third, maybe a tenth. The, the, the best guess is about a third. So if you, see, if you start with something like, say, 300 solar masses, about 100 solar masses of that will turn into stars. Well, now we're talking to one like really big star or a few big stars. But the, when we saw this, we instantly realized what we're seeing here is the very earliest stages of star formation. These things are going to make massive stars, and they're going to make a few of them at most. But we were looking at the birth of, of big stars and perhaps star clusters. So when we, when we looked at these cores, we found that most of them, in fact, show no signs of star formation activity. They don't, they don't show that the protostar is formed. So it looks like about two-thirds of these are in the very early stage before the star is formed. But a, a third of them, though, show unambiguous signs of star formation, that the protostar or a, a very young star is already formed. The evidence for that is we see fast motions. We see certain molecules that only form under those conditions. Silicon monoxide is an example. And we see these embedded bright objects that are bright in the infrared. Now again, brighten the infrared means that the star has collapsed, heated up the dust and the gas, and now it's glowing in the infrared. So that's an unambiguous sign that the protostar is formed. So let me just show you how that looks like. So here's a, an infrared dark cloud. This is a picture from the uh, Spitzer Space Telescope. Um, I was a co-investigator on this project. And what we're showing here, here is um, three different we're showing three different uh, images superposed. The 3.6 micron image is shown in blue, the 4.5 micron is shown in green, and the 8 micron is shown in blue. That should be red, sorry. Red. Normal star show is blue. And in this particular infrared dark cloud, here's a core where absolutely nothing is happening. There is nothing going on here. And we took 
um, spectra, molecular lines, using the Aram 30 meter telescope in Spain, just to see what's going on with the molecular line emission. So the point of this is that we did our homework. We, we took a lot of data. But when we look at a, another core, this core is active. Previous core, there's nothing going on. This is a quiescent core. This is an active core where star formation is happening. What we see is this interesting green color in the um, this infrared rendition. And this is still a mystery why it's green. But we see green stars or green fuzzy objects toward these cores all the time. And we have coined the term, and I'm really delighted, this is now appearing in the literature, green fuzzies. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the stars are very clever. Um, but these active cores show an amazing signs of star formation. There's just unambiguous the star formation is going on. These spectra look a lot different than the spectra I've shown you before. You see these green fuzzies, you see other things. Do you have a question? What's the scale of that object? Oh, this is about oh, half a parsec. Parsec is the, is the radius of, half a parsec, uh, of the Earth, yeah. Earth's orbit. No, no, the Earth's orbit is uh, one astronomical unit. The, the, a parsec is 200,000 astronomical units. It's okay. so about 100,000 AU. Okay, okay. Yeah. The contour lines are... are this, is the mil this is the cold dust. This is the millimeter continuum emission. Now, this shows the cold dust. Yeah. How long after the Perlis star forms do you, do you get nuclear radiation? Boy, that's a good question. We don't know. Uh, I've seen guesses ranging from 10,000 years to um, 10 million years. So we don't, it's, it's an open question. I think it's actually uh, longer than people think. I think it's more toward the million year range than the 10,000 year range. Maybe a few hundred thousand years is probably the best guess right now. But it's, 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 it's difficult to tell. I mean, God, I wish I could watch a star form, turn on my stopwatch, wait 100,000 years and say, okay, that's it. <laughs> so it's a very difficult question to... And, and what are yeah. these velocities? This is the velocity of the... Um, of the molecular line emission. So this, the whole cloud is moving at something like 55 kilometers a second away from the Earth. And then this shows you the spread of the, of the emission from the gas, which is actually an interesting clue because these, there are very fast motions in these particular cores. I mean, that's actually the next question. So let's compare like the spectra from an quiescent core to an active core. There's nothing happening in this star forming region. There's absolutely nothing. And you see a little bit of, you know, this is, a, this is the molecule of carbon monosulfide. It's like carbon monoxide with sulfur instead of oxygen. And the, these lines are quite faint. And you look at these, the active um, cores, and they're much different. All these lines are very bright. These lines indicate you have very high densities, and you have very warm temperatures as far as star forming regions go. Yeah. And so are, are these velocities, the whole cloud, going away from us? Or yes. Are they, or are they collapsing? No, the whole cloud is going oh, away okay. from us. These are radio velocities. Yes. Oh, okay. That's right. But what's very interesting, you see how fat these lines are? They're very fat. I mean, maybe you don't have the experience. But typically, a molecular line is only like a couple, three kilometers a second wide. These are like 20 or 30 kilometers a second wide. That's like 10,000 miles an hour. So the gas here is being moved at very high rates. 10,000 miles an hour. What are the two spikes in the middle? Like this one? What, that one and the one to its left? This is, a, this is an interference. We're actually detecting the computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, and this, this line here is just to mark the, the systemic velocity of the cloud. What's very, but the, these very high speeds indicate that there's something active ver happening in the middle. And I'll, I'll show you what that is in a minute. So uh, 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 one, sec one section of it is going at 60 kilometers per, per second, and mm -hmm. then some of uh, it's 80 and some of it's 40. <laughs> yeah, that's right. What kind of an object is that? This is, um, this is a protostar with an outflow. I mean, physically, what it, kind of a star So it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a young star that's, about, that's just forming. Yeah, and the okay. reason that you have these velocities is that as stars form, gas comes in and gets spit out. So we're looking at one side and the other? Or? Right. Okay. We're looking at an outflow. Okay. And I'll, I'll show you examples of outflows that are a little clearer than that. But this is unambiguous evidence. About a third of these things are really forming young stars. Now, another smoking gun is the, you know, the, the, 